Good evening everyone. Welcome to another live stream. Just trying to get my iPad to uh, sort itself out so let me just have a little look. There we go. I can see nine of you in at the moment. If someone could just pop a comment up for me just so I know it's working that would be fantastic. Just got a little delay I think when I, what I'm seeing on my iPad. There's Jules. Hi Jules. Thanks for that. <laughs> just as anxious waiting for the first comment as it is on the other one. Hi Rihanna. Hello, hello. <laughs> so you can see the page looks a little bit different to the other day. I've been doing a bit of work on it over the last couple of evenings. Hi Dawn. Hi Christine. So hopefully you guys are finding the lives on this new platform um, manageable. It seems to be a little bit uh, better for me on here because it uploads straight away. Hi Tina. How are we all? I hope you all had a lovely Christmas. So, show you a little bit of what I've done earlier on on here. Hi, Ayana. So, this is a first layer of ink tents that's gone down this afternoon down here. So, we will be covering this on another video, quite possibly not tonight. I've got the glazing stage to do on this bit. So, we're going for like a, a red, orange, yellow sunset sky on this one. What I'm going to continue on with tonight is a bit more of the stonework because on the last live together we did just this little bunch of stones here and I realised I only covered it for probably about five minutes so <laughs> I'm going to carry on with some of this stonework along here and then we'll see how we're doing for time and where we get up to and things for those of you that are following along. So the area that I did it water wise with you guys the other evening I've just used exactly the same colour scheme and moved it all the way down the page so the water is finished now thanks dawn <laughs> cute page hopefully it will be cute i was going to do some of the foliage first and then i thought no i really need to get this background in before i start messing about with other things so we'll see where we go i may have time to put some of this colored work down and do some glazing so i'm going to try and keep an eye on the comments as well as what i'm doing on here and we'll see how we go <laughs> let me just zoom in a little bit Hi Ariana. Hello everyone with a big pink wave. So I've managed to figure out how to keep this conversation to only subscribers and I've managed to figure out I needed to turn on the live chat playback. So apologies to those people that didn't catch it when I was live the other night. There will be a playback on this one. Hi Hannah. Hi Dominique. You okay? Hopefully everyone is okay so without further ado let's get cracking now i have put the color palettes that i'm using um for the stonework in the description below i'm going to try my best to start listing colors as i've used them so i'm going to carry on like i've said with a bit of this stonework this evening and then we can have a bit of a chat so just to run you through the colors we have french greys in a 90 50 and 30 percent in prismacolor can't show you the 90 because it's in a pencil extender just now. And then we also have a couple of light fast pencils. So Julie, you'll be happy about that because you've got your new babies to be playing with at home for Christmas. So Forest and Olive Earth. So without further ado, let's get going. We can have a good chat as well while we're going through. So goggles on Suzanne so we can see the page. So base layer wise, when I'm doing stonework, I kind of like to lay down where I'm going to be having my shadowed areas, first of all. Now, as I explained on the live the other evening, I'm not necessarily one of these colourists that will think about the picture in terms of where I want the light source to be. So I'm not going to be saying, well, the light source is coming from this way, so that's the only direction that I'm going to be putting the light on the stones. I kind of just vary where I'm putting it, depending on where the mood takes me. It's a little more abstract, but it's how I prefer to do it. My precious one says, Jules, yeah, I know. <laughs> Turns us all into Gollum off Lord of the Rings, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it does to me anyway. <laughs> so 90% French grey. Let's go ahead and put some uh, shadowy bay layers down on this one. So very, very light hand on this because we are going to be building those layers up with different colours. I just want to choose where the shadowy bits are going to be coming from. And I tend to do like a group of stones all at the same time. So push a little harder in towards this skull, I want to say. Um, just because that's the dark, going to be the darkest area of this particular one. And then under here, 
we'll just nudge a little bit of shadow in this top corner and the same under here what's sherry saying would you have any conversions from another set Ooh, are we talking conversions for the stonework colors mm. i'm just trying to think um you'd be all right with the prismas if you've got prisma the forest and the olive earth are kind of interesting colors um let me just that's the thing you see these light fast pencils and the prisma i'm kind of using them together because they complement each other so the shades that we have in the prisma we don't have in the light fast and vice versa so it's a little bit difficult this forest is almost a black green um comparison wise with prisma lord possibly a marine green or a kelp green for this one this one here i would probably say mm, maybe a moss green but a moss green might be a little bit too bright and cheerful but it would work in the same way so potentially i would suggest those two um as kind of holbein oh i don't have holbein sherry i'm so sorry <laughs> i've got a clue <laughs> hiya marcy excited to see me live i'm glad you're here welcome I had some lovely feedback from you guys actually about me moving over to youtube so this is really good because i was kind of nervous of taking this step to go live on here and actually after the first live um a couple nights ago it took me four hours with um youtube's technical help to resolve a couple of sort of gremlin type issues that i was having not obviously the furry kind the it kind but you know what i mean <laughs> So let's carry on putting this base layer in. So we're on the 90% French grey at the moment. So I'm going to shadow in against the underneath of the water, against this stone. And we'll do this wee clump above it as well. But yeah, I don't have Holbeins. I don't even know if Holbeins are wax or real based. Um, I do not need more pencils, she says to herself, hoping to convince myself that I don't now need to look at them. <laughs> Honestly. I'm so flaky. Somebody only has to mention pencils I don't have and I'm like, ooh, I'm just in search. <laughs> so let's carry on. So just varying a little bit of the direction of some of this light. Situations like this where you've got two stones next to each other, really that would kind of suggest to me, well, this is going to be shadowy in here. So I'm going to vary where I'm popping the light for these stones. I'll probably opt for these top corners and the same for this one. So it's just about having a look at the way that the stones are lying sort of together next to each other and sort of deciding really where you're going to be putting your light sources in. You just got the full set for Christmas. Nice one. Julie, please don't like any more pencils. I haven't mentioned, Julie, that I really like the Faber-Castell Black Edition. Have we had this conversation yet? I know we messaged a bit over Christmas. Did we have that conversation? I can't remember. But they are wonderful. So carrying on shading in between these gaps. So same principle, we're going to shadow in where these little black areas are that Joanna's already drawn in for us. And then we're going to lighten up as we go up the rock and start um, building in some of these other colours. No, says Julie. Ah, So Faber-Castell Black Edition found on holiday when I was in Germany. I know they sell them here, but... I was like, oh, Faber-Castell in Germany, I must get them. They were under 20 euros for 50 pencils. And they are buttery, buttery soft. Not as soft as these bad boys. Um, not quite as pigmented as these either. However, in terms of a good budget and a good go-to pencil, love them. Really, really nice. Um, and they're only 20 quid. So even if you don't need any more pencils, it's not going to hurt really, is it? New Year's sale maybe or Amazon warehouse deals might have box. Dominic, you definitely can hear me. <laughs> I'm so bad. You guys reverse enable me all the time, so this is me getting my own back. So jumping in with the 50% French grey now. So this is a couple shades lighter than the 90%. We're just gonna blend out the 90%. Oh Sherry, really? You weren't that ex impressed except on black paper. Mmm, that's really interesting. I've just done a lovely page in them and I was dead impressed. But then different strokes for different folks. Um, we all have our favourites, don't we? So it could just be that they're not your pencil, maybe. So just over blending that 90%, blending it out a little bit. 
I'm going to do the same with all of these, still leaving a pop of white because that's where the lightest French grey that I've chosen for this palette is going to sit. And these greys, a bit more brown in tone than a true grey, but a really nice base for popping other colours over the top. Dominique, you've just got the ink tents, how wonderful! You will need them if you're following along. Here is one I prepared earlier. So people of a certain age in the UK will recognise that as a quote from Blue Peter. Well, I think it's still going. <laughs> Took you a year to get them. Oh my goodness. You will love them. Bit of a learning curve, um, but you will love them. Don't forget, guys, if you are new to ink tents and you're going to be following along on this page, I do have an ink tents for beginners video. So you won't have to scroll back because it's a bit of a vintage one now, but that may help you a little bit. And obviously I will be demonstrating them live on this as well. Not that I'm an expert in using them, I just use them my own way. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. So try it on black paper, says Sherry, for the black edition. I may just have to do that. I have a pad of black paper, so I may just have to try that. So very, very gently with um, all of these layers. You may notice that I have the pencil a bit more on the flat um, than sort of pointy end down. Pointy end down is going to make lots of scratchy marks and lines on the stonework and we're going for more of a textured look. So if you just hold your pencil more to the side and use the flat edge of the point, you will get a much smoother blend. Be cosy. Hi, welcome. Yana says I love my Holbeins. Oh, I'm not listening to you guys about Holbeins. I refuse to look for more pencils. <laughs> I'm getting reverse enabled again. It's not good. So jumping over to the 30% French Grace. This is the lightest one of the palette. And we're just going to go ahead and slightly over blend the 50% and push this lighter grey right over into the edges of where we've left these little pops of white on the page so again nice and gently I'm just sort of smushing the colors together but in a very very gentle way so just top all these um, little bits off up here which is where we've got the light sources going in so there we have our base so from here depending on the kind of look that you're going for you could add browns over the top of this, um, just greens over the top of it. You could add a myriad of colours onto the top of this um, grey palette that we've put down. Now for stonework, I kind of like to have a little bit more of like a greener tone to it, um, sort of mossy, especially where we're near water. So what I like about this, um, this shade here of forest. Oh, hi, Mona. Videos out of focus for Louise. Oh, interesting. I'm seeing it okay on my end. <laughs> so the thing I like about this forest shade is it's not green and it's not black. It sits nicely in between, very, very dark. So we're gonna use this one first of all, just to get a nice layer of shadows going on with this. So as our guide, we're gonna go for the same edges where we put that 90% French gray down first of all. And again, a very gentle hand with this one because it's very pigmented. So we're just gonna use little circles over the top, dig into these edges. So this is an oil-based pencil. It will sit really nicely over the top of the Prisma, which are wax-based. You can mix and match your sets. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, are you saying hello to people that you've missed? Hi, Angela. Lovely surprise to get up and see I can catch live. Where are you just now, Angela? What time zone are we on? Are you over in the US or somewhere? Because you're saying... You're saying good morning. We're good evening here in the UK. We are um, quarter past seven in the evening. But welcome to the stream. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same with all of these. Now, when I say um, sort of super soft, whisper soft hand on this one, if I just show you on a plain piece of paper, if I'm pushing quite hard with the pencil, I'm going to get a really pigmented lay down of colour. The blending that I'm doing over the top of these greys is so light that that's about the level of the colour that we're getting. So you should be able to see the difference there. We're getting very little of the pencil over the top of the black. Afternoon in New York, says Mona. Wicked. And JSS is here as well. Hi. Ah, oh, New Zealand. 8.15 in the morning. How lovely. 
So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this. I'm going to try and keep my eye on the chat as well. So if I'm missing anybody, I'm so sorry. So just nudging into all of those darker areas while we put that 90% French grey down. Little circles. Very, very gently. We just nudge this into the, the black. So where Joanna's given us the black in between, I'm going to go over the top of that with a black pencil just to make it more of a true black. Just peeking in for a few minutes, are you, JSS? Well, welcome for the few minutes that you're here. Thanks for joining. And all being well, this will all be up on replay, including the chat replay. So anybody who is watching this after the event, you can see what we're all chatting about. And like when I've been doing them uh, in other places, obviously you can't always replay the chat, can you? So some of my videos may not make a lot of sense to a lot of people. Hopefully that is about to change. So I'm just going to keep little circles again, very, very gently. And then what we're going to do is use the other light fast in the palette, which is this olive earth colour. So I think if you're following along in Prisma, probably a moss green, it will be a little darker than this though. Um, this is a shade that you don't have in the Prisma colour. So go for a moss green, but don't press very hard or you're going to obliterate all of your grey on your stonework. So we're just going to use the pencil slightly on the angle again and very, very gently blend out the forest that we've put down. And I'm going to nudge that over into that 30% French grey as well, just to give it more of a green tone. So what did Catherine get me for Christmas, Susanna? Hi, Adi. Um, So this year... Instead of getting a bunch of different bits and pieces, um, Catherine a few weeks ago did see some different model kits in the sale on Amazon that she really wanted. So she had those early. They came um, around the beginning of November. And then I wasn't too sure what I wanted. There wasn't really anything I wanted or needed. So um, just before we went on our cruise, Catherine's iPad decided to die painfully. And the new 2022, just bog standard, not iPad Pro or Air or whatever and if they are, had just been released and they were on offer on Amazon. And my iPad was several years old as well. So we decided to have a big item this year and we upgraded our iPads. So I didn't have anything to open on Christmas Day because it was already set up and I was using it. <laughs> so yeah, I got no, no sort of colouring equipment apart from... Um, a couple of lovely people sent me some bits off my Amazon wish list. So I've got a bunch of distressed ink things and I've got a book as well, which was very, very kind. Always appreciated. Not necessary, but always appreciated. There we go. So last little step with this bit of stonework is we're going to go ahead now and just deepen in some of the black around the edges of the stones. This is my tiny, tiny little black dude, my Prisma colour. So he's going to have to go in a pencil extender. So what's Sherry saying? Oh, your big gift was your whole wines. Nice. I think, Julie, didn't you say that your husband pretty much cried when he ordered you those um, light fast pencils as your big Christmas present? Do I remember that in a chat? There was gentle weeping involved. <laughs> I'm sure that's what you said to me, <laughs> which did make me chuckle <laughs> a lot. Right, let's just get a better point on this one. So when you do the um, little sort of black areas in between, you do want a very nice sharp point on here. But yeah, isn't he tiny? Tiny, tiny little guy. Loads of use left though when you stick him into one of these things, these pencil extenders. This will keep going for ages unless you decide to do some daft like a whole black background with it and then it'll be like a third of a page, but you know what I mean. So just to get rid of some of these little bits that build up. The light fast aren't quite as crumbly um, as the prismas, but they do still have a little bit of residue. Oh, he wept like a baby. And you've been told they're for your birthday as well. That's unreasonable, Jules. I mean, when is your birthday? It's going to be a little while away, I would imagine. I would just say to him how sublimely happy these pencils are going to make you. And he may have forgotten about them by the time it's your birthday. I can give you a myriad of excuses for the exact like, type of situation. <laughs> right, let me swish this around a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to nudge this down slightly because my lamp is 
bright enough to land a plane with and it's just glaring a bit off the page. Oh, end of January. Oh no. Same as me, Julie. Ugh, you're on to a loser there, I'm afraid. He's not going to forget, is he? <laughs> so with the black, um, you can do pretty much what you like here. So if you have a look at these ones, these ones in particular have got the same solid outline and were nice and smooth. By moving the pencil around in different directions, you'll get more of a textured look on the stones. And that's what I'm going to do on here. Just as an FYI, the light fast hard. No, they're buttery soft. Um, they sit for me kind of between a prism colour and a polychromos. Um, very, very soft, very, very pigmented. A little more work to get the colour on the page than a prisma would be. But once you've got them, um, I mean, they have not been back in my cupboard at all. Not at all. What's Hannah saying? You're getting luminance in February with Amazon vouchers from work. Oh, wonderful. I must use my luminance a bit more. They've only been out of the cupboard a couple of times. It's sacrilegious. Honestly. So here we go. So again, paying attention to where you've put the, the shaded areas and things. So I've shaded the underneath of this one. I hadn't gone all the way around because I was waiting until I've done this one. So let's just go ahead and sort of carry on with this one. So a little more pressure here because we're, we're nudging this colour onto a few different layers of pencil now. And I'm just going to vary the stroke a little bit. So little circles, little lines, just to texturise things. And then where we want to deepen that shadow in very gently, or it's just going to be black. And you just put a bit more pressure down. And then just graduate the pressure so that you haven't got like a harsh stop start line. So I'm going to dig into these teeny tiny ones under here, first of all. Can't do much with these because they're so, so tiny. But what we can do is maybe give a little hint of a shadow underneath these ones here. Hi Gwen, first time catching me live. Oh, I hope I don't disappoint. <laughs> Welcome. And Sarah, it's taken me this long to find out how to chat. Oh, bless you. It took me four hours to sort all of my glitches out after the first live that I did a couple nights ago. So you're in good company there. <laughs> I said to the guy that was helping me on the technical helpline, I feel about 151 years old. It's this, it's got to surely be easier than this. <laughs> so hopefully we're, I'm going to nail it this time. That's what I'm going for. I'm going to nail it. So I'm not going to mess about too much with this side of the shading until I've done these little pebbles underneath. So let's just focus on the bits where we've already got the colour either side. So just varying the stroke really. And I'm just going to dull those two down slightly as well. And then let's go into these top ones. So interesting looking at all of your little thumbnails. So some of you I haven't actually seen your pictures before. So it's nice to see what you look like, Yana. I haven't seen your picture before. And it's all different thumbnails. So I'm so used to seeing you guys on Facebook and Instagram. Well, Instagram, I have to have a list, which is embarrassing. But yeah, it's um, I'm going to have to get used to all your different thumbnails, aren't I, on here? Because you've all got different sort of variations of names and stuff so um if i start talking like i've never seen you before just remind me that i probably have seen you before <laughs> it's just because we're on here oh thanks guys that's so kind at least i can speak coherently today i was really nervous about the live um doing my first one on here the other night so i was a bit da -da 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 -da. so i was going through thinking wow we can't speak coherent english this is not going well <laughs> So I'm colouring over where Joanna's given us the black bits in between these stones just because it's not quite as true a black as I would want it to be. And I'm doing exactly the same blending motion as you've seen with all of those other different layers. But very gently. Gentle hands. Let's just nudge around here as well. Learned so much from me, Gwen. That's good to hear. Thank you. Hiya, Bev. Bev, I'm so glad when you're here and you're in capitals. It really does unnerve me when you're not in capitals. So you must be on your laptop. Welcome. <laughs> when you're on your phone and it's like not in capitals, I'm like, oh, it's a Bev imposter. It's not really Bev. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm glad that all of you are here, by the way. Oh, bless you. I wish mine looked as good. It never does. Thing is, guys, um, I've been doing this stonework in this way for like, 
loads of pictures so for me I find this quite easy the first stone wall I did looked shocking um, it looked like somebody had run a stone wall over so if you are following along don't be too hard on yourself um, you'll all have your own individual ways of doing things you're not we're not going to create like another however many of, of my exact picture because you've all got your own way of doing things so don't be too hard on yourself don't put any pressure on yourself just enjoy the process and practice just practice 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 you know i'm my worst own critic so i completely get it but don't stress just enjoy there we go so i'm going to show you um how i've done some of the little pebbles as well um it's not going to be terribly exciting so i've done done it exactly the same way exactly the same way so let's do let's do some of these little ones that are up here see all these numbers this is where i've been following along on one of um chris cheng's and i've written down the minute and the second of where i've got to because <laughs> i can never remember suzanne do you need to say chocolate for the last time for gail i know i don't even know if gail's on stream on here tonight she might not be i haven't seen her if she is here but yeah i do so going back to the 90 percent french gray again Okay, so I'm going to do these in exactly the same way, but because we're kind of looking down on these ones, the shadow is going to kind of go around one of the edges, I would say. But some areas maybe more than others, so we'll start in exactly the same way. And this is a good way of covering up anywhere that you've wobbled around with your blue pencils like I have. So same technique. We'll have that as a water bubble, so I'm not going to do uh, and we'll have that as a water bubble as well because it's a bit too small so same thing louise this is your first time as well welcome There's lots of first timers on here tonight but don't be shy do chat away i'm keep trying to keep my eye on my ipad as well as doing this um which sometimes is a bit like patting your head and rubbing your belly well it is for me anyway <laughs> definitely we might have time to sort of skip over and do a bit of the ink tents work potentially which means i'll just have to amend the uh, the post description to include the colors for that as well because i don't really do more of this foliage until i've got more of the ink tents down i'm just having trouble kind of visualizing how i'm wanting it to look so yeah we will have that as a little rock as well so these are very, very loose, very, very quick. Just varying where we're putting some of that darker shadows down. Okay. So moving down the palette again. So French grey again in Prismacolor on 50%. Oh no, Sarah, you're saying it's shocking. Oh, bless. I'm sure it's not even half as bad as you think it is. But it's so frustrating when you're trying to do something and it's just not quite coming right. Um, I get frustrated with my own stuff as well. I think that's why I tend to do things like this um, in a practice run before I come on stream with you guys. Because if I'm trying something new or I'm not sure where my thought process is going, it can just end up being a bit clunky. A little bit clunky and nobody wants clunky colouring. Especially when you're trying to follow a live stream. <laughs> So it's still got the pencil nicely on the side here. So the pointy end is not going directly on the paper. We're using the very edge of it. Lisa Larson. Hi, Lisa. Snowing in Idaho. Oh, goodness. We had a bit of sleet here earlier on, um, but we haven't seen any snow yet. I feel like I should touch wood at this point. Um, but it's pretty nippy here. Not as nippy as where I was on the cruise a few days ago. That was absolutely Baltic. So 30% French grey now, so the lightest one. So where we've left the little pops of white, we're just going to introduce this over the whole thing. Just blend everything together. Very gentle hand again. And then we use exactly the same process with these little pebbles as we did with the rocks underneath. So I'm leaving the odd one, which is going to be more of like a water bubble. Probably a bad idea to leave that one because it's in the middle of a bunch of rocks, Suzanne. So let's just 
get this one up to the same uh, speed as the other ones. Oops, Daisy, wrong end. And I got very far trying to colour it over with uh, the wrong end of the pencil. So just nudge this over the edge here. Lovely. So I'm just going to sharpen up my forest colour because some of these pebbles are really teeny tiny so we want a nice sharp point. Very windy in North Wales so it's going. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the UK has been having a bit of rough weather the last little while. Here we go, so forest back on the light first again. So let's start with these ones. So we've got a bit of an overlap here. So let's pop a bit of this darkest colour in here against this one. Leave this side a bit lighter. This one I think will go kind of all around the edge. So little circles again. This one, a bit of an overlap. So we'll go into the sort of back end of this one. This little one down here will do the same. So we've got a bit of an overlap here, so I'm going to dig into this area with this colour. Hiya Sandra! Wow, 32 degrees in New Zealand. Oh, goodness me. I would always, always rather be too cool than too warm. I don't do well in hot temperatures at all. But I wouldn't mind it a few degrees warmer than it is um, at the moment in the UK because it's been pretty chilly. I'm going to go all the way around the edge with this one as well. Did I say hi to you, Sandra? I think I just did. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Hi, welcome. Let's do the same with this one, go in from kind of the middle. This one, we've got some overlaps. We'll dig into this side and again here. And then these two. Let's kind of go around in a horseshoe on this one. So just varying the light edges of the of the stones. There's no right or wrong way. You haven't got to have like a directional arrow or we'll have it perfect. Just do it as you want to. Let's have a look what Hannah's saying. What do you use to live? You need to do some for work. Um, I'm just on my phone, just on my iPhone. So on with Olive Earth now, so light first. So yeah, this is just my um, my iPhone. I have an iPhone, what have I got? An iPhone 13 something. Pro, I want to say. So same again, just going to blend out the forest bit, leave a sort of lighter area on the top of these pebbles here. do exactly the same and then we will go around with the black as well and then once I've put all of the white gel pen I'll probably sort of dot some of the white gel pen around the edges here and um, just to break things up a little bit but some of the um, the white pen dotage will be left until the end because we need to wait until all of the ink tents has been done because of course water will will dilute the gel pen and whilst it will give us an interesting effect it's probably not going to be that successful. Right so back to the black pencil again. So I'm not going to use very much of this at all. I'm just going to go to the sort of edges where we'd put down that 90% French grey to start with and again like I did with um, the rocks underneath I'm just going to over colour this bit so it's more of a truer black and then just darken in any areas. You have to go really gently with this because we don't want to obliterate the nice green and grey shades that we've got going here. So if you press too hard at this stage you're going to obliterate everything that you've done but what we can do is change the pencil stroke a little. We can just change the shape of some of these stones like this. So instead of having a perfect circle, I'm just going to introduce some black pencil into there and then it suddenly becomes less round. You can only do it when it 
shows your face like to, to, to someone when I don't show my face I don't like front of uh, front of camera stuff either I find it excruciating so those of you that have watched my um live streams that I did with Johanna um you'll see until I get sort of talking to her and forget that my face is on camera I'm kind of looking like I'm going to die imminently because uh, front of camera stuff is not the most comfortable thing I prefer to be behind it <laughs> just carry on. Let's just add a bit more shadowing into the edge of this one, just change the shape of this one slightly as well. So where I've left these edges here there'll be some white gel pen which will kind of blur these lines but just by pushing the pencil in some different places we've kind of changed the shape of a few of these. We'll do the same on this one. Hi Cara! There we go. So, what do you guys want me to do? Do you want me to show you the glazing of this or do you want me to do more stonework? You let me know while I have a quick sip of my drink. What do you want me to do? I just moved as far away from the phone there as I could do. So apologies if there was any gold pitch. <laughs> So yeah, what do you fancy me showing you? Because I can do some of the glazing on this. I can try and do a bit of an ink tents layer because we've only been going for half an hour. So I could do, do this in this bit. And what do you want me to do? More stones? It's up to you, I don't mind. So what you've seen here with the stonework, um, all of these little areas here will all be exactly the same. Um, these not so much. Um, I'm not really even sure what they're supposed to be, so we'll we'll wing that. Ink tents, background, ink tents. <laughs> okay. So obviously the same will be done of these areas as well. Okay, so ink tents, we're getting some votes for ink tents, background. Glaze some, says so Louis. Okay, we'll try and do a bit of all of it. I'll do some of the glazing first and then we'll do some of the, or shall I do the ink tents first? I'm going to tell you kind of how I came up with this palette because it might help a few of you. So I knew I wanted some kind of sky on here, but I wasn't exactly sure kind of what shades that I wanted to use. So all I've done is I've taken it back to um, the colour wheel because I'm not using any of the colour cube cards or anything for this one. I'm just kind of going with the flow, so to speak. So colour wheel. Um, you can get this in a pocket version. Um, I don't know why I went for the huge one because it's a pain in the neck to try and uh, take anywhere because it's like a dinner plate. So mainly blues in here. Now with these colour wheels, you set your arrow to the colour that you're wanting to match. So in this case, I've moved this round so that we're on blue. Now, what this is telling me is that directly complementary colours from blue would have an orange tone. And of course, then either side of that, we have a red orange tone and a yellow orange to tone. So anything that's next to each other is complementary. On this colour wheel as well, primary colours, blue can be used with red. So in my head, what I'm going for is a sky that has a red to an orangey yellow palette. And that's how I've decided on the colours that I'm going to use. I had thought about using purple as like the top colour, the, like the darkest colour, which would have sat okay up here, but not so much the colours I was blending it into. So that's my kind of thought processes. So what I've then done is kind of had a little look at my um, ink tents uh, swatching chart, which I could really do with redoing. This is about a million years old. And I've looked at the kind of pinky, orangey colours and selected myself a palette from here. So the colours that I have gone for in the ink tents shades are... So this is from darkest to light. So I've gone with carmine pink, which I'll just hold this here. So carmine pink. So I will, I'll alter the description below so that these colours are noted down as well. And then the next one I've gone for scarlet pink. Ah, Gwen, you have the same one. Don't use them as much as you should. It takes a lot of the stress out of colour choices sometimes. If you don't know what's going to go with what, just colour wheel it. 
that's what I do. So tangerine. Have you done any more pictures using colour cubes? No, Hannah, I haven't. Not since the birthday cake page. I will do, but I've kind of found my own inspiration for the last few, so I haven't needed to, which is good. <laughs> and golden yellow. So when I tested it out on a piece of paper earlier on, this is the glaze colour. So we're going from darkest blending down into the lightest colour. So dark to light in those four colours. So if we apply some of this, let's do in this top bit up here. I'm just going to zoom it very slightly. So we're going to go for the carmine pink, first of all, which is the darkest bit. Oh, hi, Maria. So we're going to that basically all of these different little vistas are going to be exactly the same so we're going to do the same colour blend down so it's kind of like lots of mini sky scenes so we start nudging some of this carmine pink in underneath here so I'm not going to take this all the way up to the edge just because I've had mine um, spiral bound as you can see and it just becomes a little bit problematic for the edge bits where you have a design that goes right to the edge of the page so I will kind of cut mine off a little bit in midair so I'm going to push a little bit harder with the ink tents towards the top of this little mini area and then where I want to introduce the um, scarlet pink colour in we're going to do the same principle as we were doing with the stonework so we just ease off on the pressure with the pencil and just add a little less so carry on going along here. So nudge this into all of these little nooks and crannies underneath these pebbles. So I do jump around a little bit when I'm doing this, particularly if I'm graduating an area. So what I might do is apply the colours in. Um, we'll see how we're doing for time, because if we're going to do some glazing as well. I don't want to rush it and then make a complete armpit of it. That would be unfortunate. So underneath here as well. So do one colour at a time. Get all of your graduation done. One little area at a time so that your lines are where you want them to be. I'm just going to ease off a little bit. So a little of these goes a terribly long way. You don't have to press very hard at all with these. Yes, um, they're definitely a learning curve, um, Sherry. They really are. Practice makes perfect. What you need to remember with your ink tents is um, they're not watercolour. They are Indian ink and they're permanent. So when that pigment is wet, you can move that pigment around wherever you want it to be. When it dries, that's where it lands. So... The, the beauty of these over a watercolour pencil, for me anyway, is if you've put a layer down and it doesn't look quite right, you can add more of this over the top to correct it when it's dry. Or you can glaze it with pencils or do a combination of both. With watercolour, um, you will reactivate um, the colour to a certain extent every time you get it wet. So if you put a base colour down and you want to lighten it, you will get a certain amount of reactivation of what you've already put down so it can end up looking like a swamp um but yeah you do need to make sure that when you are activating them you're careful with your water as well because if you use too much water you're going to buckle your page and possibly go through to the other side so let's nudge plenty of this dark color into this corner because it's pretty dark and creepy under here we've got skulls and spiders and all sorts so I'm going to put quite a bit of the uh, of the darker red under this little bit here. Hello from Trinidad. What do I mean by glazing them? Dio, I will show you that um, in just a few minutes. So with the glazing, um, I use a dry pencil to touch the colours up, basically. And I just call it glazing. Because we're just glazing colour over what we've already put down. So um, this stage, uh, official term for this is tweakage. So I'm going back and tweaking what I've already put down now. I've got a layer of this red colour. So just pushing the pencil into any little areas that we've missed. 
softening any lines where needed. That was a bit of a harsh line there, so we'll just soften it over slightly. So that is the first layer down, and that's the carmine pink. So then we're just going to graduate this down in terms of the darkness. So the next lightest is this scarlet pink colour. So let's go to this corner. So instead of going just underneath, which would create a stripe when we're trying to blend these colours, we start from a few millimetres into the darker layer that we've already put down. And then just add this and then we ease off again. That's where we're going to put one of the lighter shades in. So we keep doing that all the way along. We'll nudge a bit of this into these little corners up here. And the good part about doing this before you do the foliage is that you can colour over any little wobbles because there will be lots of wobbles. Um, if not with the pencil, there will be with the paintbrush when I start going. <laughs> Dee said somebody's laughing. <laughs> what have I missed? I'm not sure what I've missed there. I'll have to scroll back when we've finished. So same again, just nudge this into the darker red. Pencil's still on the side so we don't get lots of stop start lines. Little circles. And just nudge this colour down sort of as far as you want it really. Sarah, that's one for Suzanne. Oh, I see. Are you laughing at my uh, my technical term tweakage? <laughs> I have lots of uh, strange words I use to describe what I'm doing, like with the um, white pen that I do. We call that dotage. The dotage of the white pen. So again, we'll nudge, just nudge this into the um, the darker red up here. Sort of medium pressure on here and then just ease off again so we're going to go for a lighter colour in this gap and the same on this side so on the next um, video that I do I'm going to save another one of these um, little vista areas to do more of this with you guys I think so either that or I'm going to need to rename this video <laughs> because I had said it was just going to be stonework. <laughs> we did that the other night as well. I was like, it's just going to be water. No, it's not water. We're going to do stones as well. Honestly, so erratic, but at least we're covering a bunch of stuff. So that's good. So there we go. Is that Derwent Ink Tense? Yes, Cheryl, it is. Oh no, can't use it, so it's collecting dust on the shelf. I promise you, you can use it, it's just a case of practising. If you're struggling, if you scroll back on my videos, I did do a Ink Tense for Beginners video, and that might really, really help you. So have a little look, because I promise you, it's easier than you think it is. So, Tangerine is the next up. And so again, we don't start just under here, where the white space is, or we're going to have a line. We're going to introduce it just above where the white space is. And then I'm going to nudge this down into almost the bottom. I'm going to put a little pop of yellow in there. And then we'll do the same with this one. So because this is higher, this bit will just be orange. So I'm going to work this down further down the page. And we will add a pop of yellow into here. So again, just reaching up a little bit higher up than where we stopped. And just nudging this down. Now with these ink tense pencils you don't have to press really really hard with them. Um, you get a lot of bang for your buck with these. They are heavily heavily pigmented so don't feel that you need to really grind the pencil on the paper. You're going to get a nice pop of colour just by going steady with them. And with the, the glazing as well that I'm going to show you guys any areas that aren't quite up to muster, you can just uh, correct it with an ordinary colouring pencil over the top or chalk pastels, whatever floats your boat really. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a chalk pastel fan, um, they just make so much mess. So it's always pencil glazing for me rather than chalk pastels if I can get away with it. If you ever see me using chalk pastels it's because I'm feeling super lazy. 
so same on this one but yeah these pencils they are a nemesis for a lot of people um you know i just use them the way that i use them the way that i am using them might be you know that it doesn't quite work for you you might need to find your own technique with them but just give them a go practice on a sketch pad so gold and yellow last up so we go into the white space into the orange above these are going to be glittery rocks down here that's why i've left the gaps so same again straight into the white spaces that are left into some of the orange up top as well so these blend really really nicely together these colors so this yellow is more of an orangey palette so you know you're quite sort of safe with this one can get a good look before activation need more practice definitely practice is the key with these things and the thing is um unless you're a qualified artist or something which i'm absolutely not i'm not convinced that anybody could pick up a medium um like such as this and just be able to run with it without having practiced and made quite a few sort of boo-boos along the way nobody would be able to do that so don't to put too much pressure on yourself mess about with a sketch pad or something or if there's a page you're not keen on in one of your books that you don't mind sacrificing have a play around with one of those i'm not sort of keen on those pages that are like wallpaper pages where it's massive repeated patterns so i tend to use those for testing things out because I, i'm not bothered if i make a mess of it basically so if you've got any pages like that lurking around that you're not sort of too keen on run with those ones so i am going to do bits of ink tents in between these but because we've got these in the way i'm going to do this off camera because i'm going to need to concentrate a, a, i am concentrating but you know what i mean not be holding a conversation <laughs> and trying to demonstrate something at the same time <laughs> right let me just have a mouthful of my juice okay let's see if you're gonna behave yourself mr pen so water brushes um you don't have to have a water brush you could use an ordinary paintbrush with these um i like these caran d'ache water brushes i find the water flow is really well controlled with them they have like a little push valve i've tried several of the other ones um on the market they just haven't worked for me this may not work for you it's but it's my favorite one have I tried ink tents in rooms? Yes, I have, Dee. Um, I used ink tents on my Rainbow Room page. So yes, I did. So we're just gonna have a, a little polite conversation with the brush. So I haven't used this since before I had my evening meal. So just want to make sure that the water flow that's coming out of this is not too much and not too little. That's too much, it's very, very wet. So I'm gonna carry on blotting and just keep testing this on my skin until we just have moisture but not a puddle so that's probably about right and then what we're going to do is a work from the lightest ink tents up to the darkest ink tents so should we start in spider corner which way am i going to be going no we'll start on the left because i'm right-handed so oh hannah you like the pentel water brush now that's interesting. I haven't tried any of the Pentel ones. I did see that in your haul, actually. The picture you put in the Facebook group, you had the... I'm sure you had the Pentel pens in that post. So, as with the pencil that I was showing you earlier, we activate this with little circles. So you go from the lightest up to the darkest. And the little circles will blend these colours together. So if you get slightly too much pigment like we had there and you end up with a line, you have a piece of paper towel handy and you just clean your brush off. So we work reasonably quickly with ink tents because you are going to get lines as things dry out. So we dot about a little bit. Um, I may be missing your comments at this stage just because of what I'm doing. I'm trying to work really quickly and just keep my eye on where the pigment is going. 
So it does work our way from the lightest up to the darkest. And you see this um, scarlet pink blending into this carmine pink now. So the flow's just dried a little, so we just give that valve a little nudge and just get the uh, get the flow of water going again. So I'm going to leave kind of like a loose line at the edge there. So anywhere where you get little um, lines where things are dried, don't worry too much um, with the glazing that we're going to do with the pencils over the top. That's where you correct it. And because it's a sky, I kind of like these lines anyway. I think it gives it a bit of a bit of movement. So we're saying hello to Carol. Um, I'm not sure which Carol it is because I'm just literally glanced at the iPad there. So hello, Carol. Welcome. So now we're going to nudge straight down into this yellow. So again, just moving along. Light to dark, light to dark. Working nice and quickly. Just to try and catch all of these little areas in together. And at this stage, if you colour over the rocks, it doesn't matter because we're going to be um, colouring them in in pencil anyway. So let's go up the side of this wee boat here. Notice the conversation gets a little less light-hearted at this point. <laughs> I do have to concentrate quite hard when I'm doing this. <laughs> you can probably hear the whirring in my uh, in my tiny brain. So the water flow again is just dried a little so we just give the uh, the valve on the edge of the brush the tiniest of tweaks. And just to get it back in the game again, making sure the brush is nice and clean. Pick up this little bit in between here now. So a little bit too much of the orangey pigment for that little gap. So just pick it up on the brush and wipe it off on the tissue. Same under here. And then we're going to go straight underneath this little guy. We'll go either side of him and all the way around and then we just pick up the pace again now because we're very very aware that we have an area towards the top that is drying so we will get some lines um doesn't matter that's what the glazing resolves so now i've started doing this i will activate all of this before i show you a bit of the glazing because it's going to look blooming awful if I don't. Oh, you hadn't noticed it was ink tents, Bev. Ah, I used four of them. <laughs> we must have had you having like a little nano break at that point. <laughs> that has made me smile. So I'm going to just nudge this into here. So again, just picking up those lighter colours. There's such a beautiful colour combination, this tangerine with this golden yellow. So again, I'm going to probably splodge about into this foliage and stuff, but that's fine. So I need a cat to make an appearance. I really do, don't I? It's funny, actually. Um, me and Catherine were discussing pets and things the other day because we actually haven't had a pet since... We lost our dog, Teddy, and that was back in 2013, so it's been a long time. And I keep thinking, I had a cat years ago. Um, I'm not convinced my mum would ever forgive me if I did get a cat, because she's terribly allergic and, and is more of a doggy person. But yeah, I think I feel, feel like I do need a colouring cat. Or we need another dog, I'm not sure. <laughs> so back down into the lighter colours again. To see where we've just have these little lines where it's started to dry out don't worry about any of those we can correct that with pencil I'm sure there's probably a way that you can do this without getting these lines but I don't know what it is so I just accept that I'm going to have these lines in places so carry on 
So again, working quite quickly. And just try and balance that out a little bit. So this brush um, is behaving reasonably well this evening. I'm not getting too much water flow. It was being a bit of a pain in the neck this afternoon. Cat's rule dog's drill, says Sherry. <laughs> I think, is it possible to be a cat and a dog person? I don't know. Are you meant to like have a favourite? I'm not sure. I did have a cat years ago. I have had cats before. Just not for a long, long time. Not since before me and Catherine got together. So we're talking like, when did I have my cats? I got them when I was 18. So we're talking like 98, 99. So quite a long time ago now. And she was great. Um, but she did used to like to sort of like nick pencils. And I used to do a lot of embroidery and stuff um, back then. And she was a little tinker for sitting uh, on my knee and then I'd see this paw sneaking around trying to grab like my um my thread that I was using and stuff so yeah she wasn't a good sewing companion <laughs> this was like fair game so again working reasonably quickly because we have these lines where the pigment is drying but whilst it's wet you can move it around the page so you will get a bit of lines. Look, if you look there, we've got some lines on this side, but that's that's why we co correct things with pencil or even another layer of the ink tents. So I'll show you how to pick a bit of colour up and correct it with ink tents, and then I'll show you the glazing part. Because I know Dee had asked the question, what do you mean by glazing? So I will show you that in a minute or two. If you get a cat, prepare yourself. <laughs> My old cat used to like paper as well. Anything that was paper that was out, she would sit on. So I'm thinking, um, I know from some of my other buddies in the colouring community, you do have cats. Um, we sort of, oh, I've completely missed that. Suzanne, you've missed a gap. Just pop a bit of the ink tents colour into it. Um, yeah, that sits on her colouring books and stuff. So yeah, we'd probably have to have words if that happened. Like you can sit with me, but you're not sitting on what I'm doing. <laughs> Hi, Emma. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, bless you. Don't worry. This will still be available afterwards for you to catch up with. So it doesn't matter. Thanks for joining. Welcome. I definitely feel a bit more um, comfortable on here live than I did earlier on in the week. You know, when you have like the first time you're trying something and you've got a butterfly stomach. That's how I was. And then four hours of tech support with uh, with YouTube afterwards really didn't help to... Uh, you know, change that. You think you can reason with a cat? Mm, quite possibly not. Whoops, a bit too blobby. A bit too keen on the water valve there. It's just got slightly too much water in that area, but that's fine. We'll just smush it about a bit. It will dry. Yeah, I'm sure you can't reason with a cat. In fact, I'm convinced you probably can't. We'd definitely be having words if I had one and it was sitting on my colouring book that I'd be like, mm, it's not really quite cricket. <sighs> and Catherine uses this um, desk as well to do her model making and things. So she's been up to her neck in um, her Apollo 5 uh, space rocket thing that she's uh, she started a couple of days ago. So she wouldn't be massively impressed if there was a cat sitting on that either. I don't think the cat would be either. It would have been very interesting shade of green and white um, looking at what she was painting this afternoon there we go so that is one layer of ink tents down now the difference here is this particular area of this one I've actually picked a bit of ink tents up off the pencil and added it in so I'm going to show you that as long as this bit's properly dry yes it is so we grab our ink tents make sure that the brush is clean. Labrador's on your feet, Louise. Oh, bless. So this is the, the darker of the four colours that we've used. And so we just pick a little bit of the colour up with the brush tip. And go ahead and add this in wherever we want it. So this smooths out a few of the wrinkles. So just want to pick a bit more colour up than that. 
So remember these are very pigmented so when you're picking up colour off the tip of your pencil like this we don't want the brush soggy soggy wet because you're going to dissolve your pencil and we don't want to pick up too much colour or you're going to end up with blobs everywhere. So we just pick up enough of the pigment to correct any areas that are not so good. Who's that that's got a barking cat? Somebody got a barking cat? Wow, never heard of that before. You know when you just glance up at a comment stream and think, what the hell have I missed there? Barking cat. <laughs> That's hysterical. So I'm just going to show you on this little area here because this bit is properly dry. There we go. So then we're going to go ahead and clean off the end of the end of the brush and we're going to go for the next one so scarlet pink just going to pick a little bit of colour up off the tip so you can just about see it there on the brush not picking up lots and lots and then blend that into what we've already put down so go a bit above the line a bit below the line a little bit like when we were applying this in the first place and then I'll show you the glazing because the other bit of this is going to be too uh, too wet for me to do any more of it this way. So clean the brush off again. Oh, you've got a Bengal cat. They're lovely, they are. Very beautiful. So pick up a little bit of the tangerine now. So same principle again. Bit above the line, bit below the line. And then last but not least... Just pick up a little bit of that yellow and just sharpen up any of these little bits that need sharpening up. Nearly picked up the tangerine then, did you see that? There we go. So that's just smoothed out some of those water lines. So we're going to correct, correct a little bit more of it with ordinary pencils. Oh, there's Liz. Hiya, Liz, are you all right? Welcome, welcome. So glazing, Julie, you'll be very pleased to hear that this is more of your new babies. So more light fast. So getting a corresponding color with this for me, I just eyeball it. So all I've done is grab my Derwent Light Fast swatching sheet, grab my intense swatching sheet and seen by eye which of these shades is going to match the ones that I'm already using. So the four that I've come up with and I'm hoping they're going to be okay because I haven't done any of the glazing before I came on air are these ones. So Derwent Red, Amber Gold, Flame and Scarlet. So I will add the uh, change the description below so that all of these colours are here as well. well. That's my bird just coming in. She's trying to tell me something without you hearing, but I'm not sure what she's saying. You're just going to sit there, are you? <laughs> she's just trying to sneak in. I never let her sneak in. So they're the four that I'm going to use. So darkest out of all of them is this Derwent Red. I'm just going to give this a bit of a sharpen. Liz says hello. Hello. She says hello. We're just talking pets. They all think that I need to get a colouring cat. <laughs> absolute abject look of horror on Catherine's face at that suggestion. <laughs> Hannah says hi as well. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> if only I'd had the camera on her at that point. So, Doe went red. We'll go in and do a little bit of the glazing. So, Dee, this is what you were asking about earlier on. So, even though I've corrected this bit like I've done with that, I'm still going to smooth some of this pencil over the top, um, just in a couple of areas especially under here. I just want to sharpen this up a little bit. So where we've already got um, this layer of ink tents down, you don't need to press very hard. So if you just think of this like we did with the stonework we were doing, you're just using the pencil on the side edge again, just enough to smooth out what's already here. Because otherwise, if you're just going to block colour it, there's no point messing about with the ink tents. Sarah says hello as well. <laughs> So under here. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't activate that bit, did I? And then have you told me that I hadn't activated that bit under the plant? Let's just wipe this brush back up just while I've seen it or I'm going to completely forget. Let's just get this bit done as well so this can be drying. Oopsie. There's the cat conversation. It put me off my groove. Deciding on pets and things. There we go. I'll just let that dry up. <laughs> there we go. Right, back to the Derwent Red. So pencil glazing is just this. We're just correcting what's already here. Is it coffee time, says Gwen? Not at this time of night, it's not, no. <laughs> I've already had my coffee for this evening. We've got coffee orders rolling in. <laughs> <laughs> Too late in the evening for coffee for me. I want to sleep tonight. <laughs> so I'm just going to roll this down. Tiny triangle missing by the spider's web. Is there? Are we talking about these ones? Because these are going to be glittery, sparkly rocks. If they're the ones that we're talking about. But nicely spotted, Louise. A mocha, please, Catherine, says Jules. <laughs> she is not going to the coffee machine. God, can you imagine if it was that easy? I pressed a button at this end and you guys all got a coffee to serve too. It would be ace, wouldn't it? So, Scarlet. Gonna do the same with this one just really really gently just smoothing out any areas that need smoothing out so under here I'm going to press a little bit harder because I just want this to be a bit darker and some of these little bits when you're trying to paint around them you can't quite get the brush into them well if you me, you can't so by doing this glazing you can just smooth over any areas that you might have missed or not quite got the brush into. So some people do two, three, four layers of ink tents, um, that's fine um, if you want a U-shaped book. Um, I tend to prefer doing one layer of ink tents maybe with a bit of sort of correction and then using this pencil glazing over the top because although you will get a slightly wonky book um, it's not going to be in a real mess. What about a Horlix, says Julie? It's got to be like 85. Horlix? You've got to be a certain, surely you've got to be a certain age to drink Horlix, Julie. I don't, I don't really know. We haven't, have we? No. You'd go for a Horlix, would you? I don't like Horlix. You don't like Horlix? No. You don't? No. No? Hot milk. Hot milk. Oh, my God. It's, it's well, hot milk. It's just another new low. Right, so flame. <laughs> Catherine loves her milk. Um, she'd happily sit and, wouldn't you, and drink like two pints of it. <laughs> I can't bear plain milk at all. <laughs> right, same again with this one. I don't actually need to correct this area too much. It's gone on reasonably smoothly. But these edge bits... Decaf isn't real. <laughs> Decaf is just, yeah, when you're a real coffee lover and a real caffeine lover, when somebody says, oh, do you want decaf? I, I kind of feel vaguely offended by it. No, I don't want decaf. I want the coffee buzz, thank you very much. Right, just nudge this in under here as well. And then... Finally. Oh, decaf means no migraine. Oh, fair enough. Maybe it has got its place if it stops your head hurting. <laughs> so, amber gold. Spider web just above the stone. I'm sure I didn't miss any here. I definitely didn't because there's watermarks. Oh, do we mean this bit? Is that the bit that you mean in, Julie? Or Rihanna even, sorry. <laughs> That's the bit that you're meaning, isn't it? Ah, you might be right. Let's pop a little bit of intense into there as well. Well spotted. Quite right. I couldn't see it. No, when I was doing this last night, actually, um, I was working on this and I realised when I was thinking about how I was doing this bit that I'd missed this whole blue line here. 
just this one. So I had to dig the blue pencils out again just to do that bit. But thank you, Louise and Rihanna. You were quite right. I just couldn't see it. So amber gold. So again, we'll just sharpen this up a little bit. So I'm not even going in all areas with, with these pencils, just really where it needs it. So if we move on to this little section here, so grab the Derwent Red again. So we can get that sort of shadowy darker layer in here. And in some of these little nooks and crannies, I bet there's going to be more little bits like that that I end up missing as well. as well so I'm just going to glaze this little bit here with you and then I'm probably going to be disappearing for the evening oh shade tree music better late than never I'm so sorry I'm only going to be on for a few more minutes but you'll be able to catch the replay so thanks for joining <laughs> I always feel bad when somebody just pops in and then I disappear it's never personal it's just timing yeah, I think we'll do um, another couple of these bits of um, ink tents. I'll maybe leave another little section to do um, live with you guys because I know those of you that aren't very confident with confident even with the ink tents might like to see see it done again, and also um, sort of learn how to miss whole areas of pictures like we've just demonstrated. So very very gently with this one, and I'm going to grab that flame colour as well. You guys are liking the colours, that's good. See that's the colour wheel for you. When you can't decide on uh, what shade your sky is going to be, just see what's going to go with what you've already used. So see where I've got a little watermark there, just going to correct it with the pencil. And it just disappears. And then lastly, so the amber gold. Yeah, happy new year to everybody as well. We're nearly there now, aren't we? New Year's Eve tomorrow. So hopefully you've all got some nice things planned. Whether that be staying in or going out or whatever. Let's do a little bit more. We're all right for a couple more minutes. So just cycling the same colours again. So back to Derwent Red. Well, Happy New Year to you as well, Liz. So we're going to be um, changing things up a bit in the coming year. So the majority of my live streams are going to be, as long as I don't have a complete mare like I had with it the other night, will be on here. Um, just because the last couple of projects that I've done in the, the big Facebook group, um, the Christmas clock being one and the wizard's room being the other I could only actually download part of those videos onto my phone so anybody else that was on my other socials and not a member of that group can't access those videos so I was like no something's got to change here because I can't be um, sort of doing part projects because I can't access things properly it's just Facebook gremlins but with it all being here in the one place this is much much better no trolls tonight no no trolls tonight I have fathomed out how to uh, turn it on to subscribers only and Liz th that thing that you put um in my group the other day when I was putting about that rule reminder um did literally nearly make me spit orange juice down down my phone that was really funny <laughs> very very funny in fact Catherine's eyebrows popped when I read that to her as well do you remember yes <laughs> <laughs> I just carry on cycling the colours. So you can see I'm barely pressing. I mean, these are very, very pigmented anyway, and so are the ink tents. So you don't need to put an awful lot of this down. But yeah, that was very, very funny. I remember it well, says Liz. It's still making me snigger now, and that's been, what, three days? <laughs> I'm such a child. Oh, dear. And on to flame. So I've got somebody on from Wales tonight saying um, how windy and awful it is over there at the moment with the weather. Oh and I've got a lady on from New Zealand who says it's 32 degrees today. Ouch. Yeah, no, ouch. <laughs> oh, 
Right, so let's just go into the yellow as well. So I'm just gonna turn this around slightly, just a bit easier for blending and things. So like in this little bit, I've piked out of putting the brush into there. So you can just correct it with, uh, with the pencil and nobody's any the wiser. So if you don't like backgrounds, like I don't like backgrounds, ink tents can be a super fast way of, um, of getting a lot of colour down very quickly. And if there's any bits you don't like, you just tweak them like this. So hopefully if these still here, you understand what the glazing part of it is now. That's what we've been doing. So I'll just do um, this last little bit here and then I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys. So I'm not going to be live this Sunday um, because we've got my mom and her partner coming around for a very much belated Christmas Day celebration. So we will be cooking and probably eating far too much again. Um, so nothing this Sunday, but keep an eye out because uh, there will be some further live streams obviously coming up on this page. But you've seen how to do the stones and you've seen how to do the water. And for those of you feeling confident, you've seen how the intense bit's done. So if you want to, you can just crack on and we will meet in the middle with the other bits on another session. Cheese and cake, says Liz. Just, is this random food or suggestions for Sunday? <laughs> we will be having um, like a Christmas Day dinner which will be lovely. Um, but poor Catherine has got to remake. So we were all ready. Um, she'd made her usual annual berry household trifle, which is oh, so good. And we were all ready and then it didn't work out um, for one reason or another and um, they couldn't come. So we're going to be doing the whole thing again and I'm going to be all trifled out. In fact, I think if I sneeze, trifle will probably come out of my face. <laughs> Won't it? <laughs> Catherine's going, oh, that's disgusting. Did you really just say that live? They used to listen to me ramble. We talk about all sorts. Oh, hi, Bunny. I've got to try and remember that your um, YouTube name is Shade Tree Music. I'd completely forgotten. I need another list. <laughs> Oh, blue cheese and cake. Oh, we're going back to what I was talking to Johanna about. Ugh, that won't be happening. That is absolutely not happening. He reckons it's an absolute taste sensation. Um, I'm not seeing it and I'm not trying it. <laughs> it absolutely not be happening. Ugh. Yeah, not good. But I think I will try um, Johanna's idea of cheese with, with warm mince pies because that sounds delish. You don't think that sounds delish? Catherine's gone a bit puce looking. Is that a no? <laughs> Catherine's going, no. I love trifle. Yum, says Cheryl. You can come round if you like, Cheryl, and help us eat trifle number two. It's going to be as big as a bucket, um, isn't it? Not quite. It's a big bowl. Yeah. <laughs> like Christmas Day, we'd better eat some of this trifle. Boxing Day, ah, we'd better eat more of this trifle. <laughs> oh. So, flame again. Oh, Liz loves trifle as well. You can join Cheryl around here and you can eat <laughs> my share then. I'm all trifled out. <laughs> Cheryl says she's getting on the next airplane. <laughs> right, I'm just going to do the last little bit of yellow in this corner and then I am going to love you guys and leave you guys for the evening so I can get all of this upload um, video description tweaked because we've gone into areas that we weren't necessarily meant to be going into this evening. But that's fine. We'll do some more of the uh, the ink tents bit perhaps on the next one and definitely some of the foliage. And I'll finish this little corner later on off camera. Can we have a picture of the trifle once it's been made and does it have alcohol? <laughs> yeah, you can get a picture of the trifle if you like. You don't have to make it one of your best ones ever. Got one on your phone. Have I got one on my phone? I have not. What you have? No. So we'll take a photograph of trifle mark two and then they can see but it won't have alcohol in it no i am daft enough already 
So, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> That's my bird heckling from the sofa. So, you've seen where we've gotten up to. We've discussed and I've shown you how to do the stonework. You've seen the water. You've seen the ink tents as well. So I'm going to be repeating this in all of these little areas. So it's going to be like a myriad of different sunset skies going all the way down the page. So if you feel comf super confident, have a go. Um, I will do more of this with you guys next time. I may do another one of like these little areas of ink tents just to show people again, but we'll move on to the foliage and other bits and pieces hopefully on the next one. So yeah, thanks for joining. I've had quite a few of you in tonight looking at this. That's been lovely. I didn't give you as much notice either, did I? But I won't speak to you all again now until the new year. So whatever you're doing and wherever you are in the world, a happy new year to you all. Thanks for your company this year. It's been really, really good. And I'm looking forward to creating more stuff with you in 2023. So I'm going to take you out of my phone stand and say ta for now. So happy new year to you all and I will see you next year. Take care.